Chris, can you hear me? Sorry, Dave, you cut it right at the end. Just want to try that again. Good evening and welcome to this regular meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth enabled by Digital Technologies. Our meeting date is Monday, March 21st, 2022. I'm Mayor Todd Kaysenberg and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the clerk to note our starting time for the minutes is 7 p.m. We wish to acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe peoples. We wish to acknowledge and recognize the long history of Indigenous peoples in Canada and show our respect to them today. We recognize their stewardship of the land. May we all live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship. Tonight's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after the meeting as an archived video. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded in their voice, image, and comment part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Thank you. Welcome to those who are joining us via the YouTube channel. Welcome to councillors, staff and delegates who will participate in this meeting tonight. At this time, I invite your decorum over the course of our meeting. I do not have any attendance regrets this evening and all are accounted for uh, based on our, our review of the interface. Let us move then to item 2.1 of our agenda pertaining to pecuniary interests. For the benefit of those unfamiliar with our council practices, provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite all councillors with a perceived pecuniary interest, including those who have declared in writing already to verbally advise the chair in public session and to submit documentation to this effect in writing, if not already done, to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should a potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may so declare and act at any point in the meeting. Let us begin tonight with Councillor Anstead. Welcome, Councillor Anstead. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Uh, through you this evening, I'd like to declare a pecuniary interest on item 5.5.1, the accounts, specifically the daycare, as my son attends the St. Mary's daycare and also on item 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Uh, next up is Councillor Behrens. Welcome, Councillor Behrens. Uh, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Good evening, Council. This evening, I will declare a conflict on 5.5.1 and 13.1, as I have grandchildren attending the North Perth Spinwright Child and Family Center, as well as after-school programming. Thank you. And next, I have Deputy Mayor Kellum. Welcome, Deputy Mayor. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg, and uh, good evening, Council. Yes, I'd like to uh, declare also pecuniary interest on item 5.5.1 with regards to the accounts. Again, specifically the daycare as my grandchildren attend, the St. Mary's uh, Daycare Center, and as well, Perth Meadows as my mother and father-in-law are tenants there. And then subsequently, 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any other councillors wishing to make a declaration at this stage who have not advised in advance? We're not seeing any. Uh, this is a good opportunity actually for me to express gratitude and thanks to Deputy Mayor Kellum for chairing last week's meeting. Um, thank you very much for service during my uh, vacation week. And I'm glad to be back as well and, and um, happy to see all of you and work all, with all of you this week and, and moving forward. Uh, to explain our virtual processes, I will be systematically trying to seek consent from various councillors as movers and seconders of the various resolutions and bylaws that are to be put before us tonight. 
I will do this to some degree alphabetically. Should a councillor not wish to respond to the request, they may say so, and I will move to the next name on the alphabet list. Regarding speaking to our business, councillors tonight will identify themselves through our conferencing technologies chat function. The clerk is assisting me tonight in maintaining the speaking order from that source. Councillors are allowed on their turn to deliver a primary question or comment and make one supplemental without intervention from me. We will follow speaking order carefully and any councillor wishing to have a second say will have to indicate again and go to the bottom of the list. This is a normal process consistent with Robert's rules of order. Councillors, you are asked to generally maintain a mute state in the web conference until I recognize your right to the floor. If when I do so recognize I don't hear you because you are muted or having some technical difficulty, I will advise. Should technical difficulty be the cause, support will be coming your way from our IT team. And I will, after a reasonable pause, call on our next speaker, coming back to you when you're next available. Should any of your votes not show up in eScribe, I will call on you when things seem stalled to register a manual vote. At that time, take yourself off mute, answer yes or no on the motion, then return to mute. Regarding item 2.2, and I have a motion before me for the adoption of the agenda for tonight's meeting. It reads pretty much like that. It reads as follows, that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved. Councillor Siler, let's start with you tonight. Will you serve as our mover? Good evening, everyone. Yes, I will move that. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, welcome to our meeting. And Councillor Andreessen, welcome. Will you serve as our second? Yes, good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg, and yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Oh. Uh, well, okay, that's carried. Um, I'm advised by the clerk that. Deputy Mayor, did you have a comment to make, or? Uh, I, I jumped the gun away to, uh, to the uh, consent agenda. I apologize, thank you. But I do want to speak at the consent agenda, thanks. Good, okay. thank you. All right, uh, let's move here to um, item three on our agenda, the so-called consent agenda. These items are placed on our agenda because they are believed to be non-contentious, yet they require council's recognition and action. Grouping them expedites our business. However, any councillor wishing to extract an item from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, or individual action may do so. There are three items on our consent agenda tonight, including the minutes of the last regular council meeting. Uh, councillors, do any of you have a desire to extract any of these items for further discussion or action? And we'll start uh, by calling on Deputy Mayor Callum. Yes, and apologize for before. No, just one uh, clerical item with regards to 3.1 with the minutes. Uh, that Mayor Kaysenberg, you opened the meeting last week, if that could just be changed to myself, and I think everything else in the minutes I agree with. Thank you. Burke is nodding her head, so we'll uh, address that certainly as well. Uh, let's, um, any other comments or, or questions at this point, Sir Council? So I have a resolution for our consideration. I think I should put as amended in here, right? So that consent item 3.1 as amended and consent items 3.2 and 3.3 be received for information. And the minutes of the March 14th, 2022 regular council meeting as amended be adopted. I think that's the motion. Sound right to you, clerk? Okay, so let's, so let's turn uh, Councillor Anstead. Will you serve as our mover for that one? Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Behrens, will you be the seconder? Yes, I will second that motion. Thanks. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. At this time, it's proposed that we move to agenda item number four uh, to enable a public meeting on drain matters that has been included in our agenda tonight. We must temporarily recess from council. I have a resolution that enables us to do so. Please. 
I think right hand side found it. I believe it's the day. And the resolution reads as follows that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth adjourns at 7 10 p.m. for uh, the purpose of a public meeting under the Drainage Act concerning the following public meeting to consider the Gingrich Shill Municipal Drain. Can I call on Council Councillor Duncan to be our mover and, and welcome, sir? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. And Deputy Mayor Callum, will you be our seconder for this one? And yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Very much. Any discussion or debates? I'm not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. This council is temporarily in recess. At this time, then, we are gathered for the purposes of the consideration of the report for the Gingrich Shill Municipal Drain. This is a public meeting for this drainage report, and I extend a welcome to any assessed landowners who have joined us for this purpose. At this time, it's my pleasure to call on Brandon Widener, who is an engineer with Spreet Associates Limited, to present the report. Mr. Widener, welcome. Good evening, everybody. Tonight we have the Gingrich Shill drain. So this is a brand new drain. It's under section four. It's just outside of uh, Palmerston, a little bit east of town there. It outlets into what is called the Kells drain. It was initiated by originally uh, Pete and Dan Schill. Um, later on, I believe Clay Clayton Gingrich signed on as well. Um, the drain essentially starts at the Pete Shills farm and outlets at the Kells drain. This is in lot four, concession 10, and then heads north up and across Perth County line 91. And then the road or the drain runs parallel along the road west um, through the Dittner farm and into Clayton Ginrich's. So the total drain length is about 574 meters. Um, there is no history on this one, as this is a Section 4 drain. It is brand new. Um, you, you originally appointed us to do this drain in November. We had the meeting just after Christmas, and in February, I issued the report. Um, all the owners were in attendance for the preliminary meeting, which was very helpful. I can tell you this drain was slightly designed over the provincial standard, we picked a 50 millimeter design. The provincial standard is a 38.1 millimeter. So that's two inches versus an inch and a half. All the owners were in agreement to do that. As well here, you'll see there is a fair amount of work on the county road. Chuck Blanchard is your county road superintendent that manages the area. Um, he was at the preliminary meeting as well. Um, there is a culvert being replaced under that road, like a large surface culvert, as well as a new subsurface crossing. In conjunction, we are moving the existing surface culvert slightly west. Um, this helps facilitate um, an improvement to the laneway for the shills, as well as there is uh, an offset catch basin being placed um, in the road allowance as well, again, to facilitate with the widening of the shills driveway in the future. So the proposed work consists of approximately 646 meters in total of 12 inch to 21 inch field tile. And there is a large amount of road work as you guys will notice the total project cost is approximately 157,000. Um, now of that 157,000, 60,000 is associated with the county road. So that's leaving the owners with, you know, essentially the other 100. Um, you all see there's allowances provided to each of the owners, and that works out to be about $6,850. Um, and the costs are all shown on Schedule C. Now, you all see there is a portion of non grantable for each property. Now, this is the cost for upsizing the pipe above the inch and a half design. So each person pays their portion of that cost. Um, that is considered non grantable. That's why it's shown separately. So. That explains that. Um, again, there's no township roads assessed on this drain. It's just one road with Perth County. Um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions from either the owners or anyone from council. Uh, 
thank you, Mr. Widener, for your report. So at this time, um, this is the opportunity for assessed land owners and or council to ask any questions or seek clarifications with the engineer in attendance. Uh, I am advised by the clerk that we did not have any uh, owners on this proposed drain um, uh, pre-register for this meeting. And so uh, the responsibility for questions thus lies with council. Uh, councillors, do you have any questions about this report or this proposed drain? We're not seeing any indication of that. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Wagner, thank you for your services and bringing forward this report. Uh, at this time, uh, because no landowner was in attendance, we assume that no one does withdraw and that there weren't significant concerns that were raised. That means at this time that we can adjourn this meeting and I have a motion to make that happen. Resolution before us is as follows. The public meeting for the purpose of the Drainage Act is now adjourned at 7.16 p.m. And that council reconvenes into regular open council. Uh, Councillor Johnston, welcome tonight. Will you serve as our mover for this one? Good evening, Mr. Mayor and the rest of council. Yes, I would so move. Thank you. And Councillor Richardson, will you be our seconder? And, and welcome, sir. Thank you. I will gladly second that motion. Um, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Council means we are resume, resuming at this point our regular meeting. Uh, pursuant to the report from Mr. Widener on this train, we have a couple of items to be addressed uh, before us. So let's get to those. Uh, the first is uh, acceptance of the report. The resolution reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth will accept the Gingrich Shill Municipal Drain Report dated February 21st, 25th, sorry, 2022, prepared by Spreet Associates. Uh, welcome, Councillor Rothwell. Will you serve as our mover for this one? Yes, I'd be pleased to uh, move that uh, motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Seiler, will you be our seconder for this one? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on that resolution? Not seeing, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. Next is the Board of Revision date setting. And uh, this is, uh, the resolution is as follows. That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth will hold the quarter revision for the Gingrich Shill Municipal Drain on April 25th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Can I call on uh, Councillor Andreessen to be our mover for this one? Yes, I'll make that motion, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Anstett, will you serve as seconder? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on that date setting? Let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. And uh, next up, we have the bio. And the bylaw resolution reads as follows, that bylaw number 49-2022, being a bylaw to provide drainage works, Gingrich Shill Municipal Drain, be introduced and considered read a first and second time and be provisionally adopted. And that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Mr. Barons, will you serve as our mover for this one? Yes, I will make that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Duncan, will you serve as our second mayor? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. 
Uh, that uh, concludes business coming from that um, public meeting. And so now uh, we turn to delegations. Uh, item 4.2 tonight, we have uh, with us our, uh, our Community Emergency Management Co Coordinator for Perth County. He also serves as North Perth CEMC, Mr. David Clark. Mr. Clark will present for Council's review an annual report of accomplishments in the Community Emergency Management Program performance. And I can assure you he's been one busy man since his arrival into the role in the last year. Uh, Mr. Clark will also advise Council on training plans, seems there's a significant training plan project underway related to emergency management for 2022 and beyond. Mr. Clark is always welcome. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg, and thank you very much uh, for having me this evening. Good evening, Council, through the Mayor. Um, for this opportunity to present on uh, the emergency management program for both North Perth and uh, the county itself. Um, I'm going to try and share my screen now. I believe this will be the screen that we want. As, is everybody able to see that? Uh, Screen the emergency management uh, first page. We can, Mr. Clark. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, as, as you said yourself, uh, Mr. Mayor, it has been a busy time. Uh, this May will be coming up to my one year being in um, this role. Uh, and it was a, a steep learning curve as we jumped in in the middle of COVID. Um, so I'm going to give you a very quick overview of the emergency management program as it exists and going forward and some of the uh, good accomplishments we had this year, working with all the different uh, municipalities and the fantastic folks within them. Um, it's been a tough year uh, being in COVID and doing things remotely and having to adapt and overcome, but but we have, and we've learned a lot from it. So um, part of the, the goals, as you can see with the three bullet points is, um, we wanna build a solid base across all of the county itself. And, and what I found in going out in, in interviewing and talking to the different municipalities is we're stronger together. Um, no one municipality, I think if we had a major event could handle it on its own without having to draw from other resources. So if we can establish the same training plan and the same program, um, basically the same emergency response plan across the county, it allows us to um, get help from our neighbors and give help to our neighbors in, in times where we have to enact these sort of things. And I think we saw, you know, a good example of that uh, on, in the unfortunate tragedy in, in, uh, in Mitchell the other week there, where all the municipalities within Perth County came together to assist in that and all the emergency services. And, you know, it was a job well done, although a tragic outcome. Um, in dealing with the people, they were positive, they were engaged, uh, people wanted to learn more. And when we did our exercises in different events, there was a great amount of participation. So we wanna capture and build upon that in our program. And what I'd like to see is that within the next three to five years that we establish a countywide incident management team uh, and incident management teams within each one of the municipalities as well. So uh, some of the accomplishments that we uh, made out within uh, 2021 uh, we were able to check all the boxes and, in fact, exceed the boxes for the province under the Emergency Management Civil Protection Act requirements for municipalities and what they have to do as far as emergency management in their communities go. And, and, and the bar was set fairly high by the folks in the municipalities, and, and uh, we exceeded that bar. So uh, kudos to all of those involved. Uh, as you can see, there's several uh, pieces to it, training and exercises, plan reviews, hazard assessments, program committees, public education, and uh, all those things were done even within COVID. We were able to pivot and, uh, and move forward through those. We're also, and especially in North Perth, was a great contributor to the vaccination clinics and my role as the CEMC, but also I have to give my hats off to Jeff Newell and Pat Burfels and uh, uh, Mark Hackett and Chris, um, you know, for hosting the vaccination clinics in North Perth. And uh, at the time when I wrote this report initially, uh, back in January, at that time we accomplished over 154 mass vaccination clinics and uh, 102,000 vaccinations given out. It's well over that now, and I can I, I can say that the partnership between the municipalities and the um, emergency management folks 
and also the Huron Perth Public Health was, I think, a great success in keeping our uh, folks safe and, uh, and getting all the vaccinations in the arms. We also uh, were able to partner with the University of Toronto, their critical infrastructure engineering program, and look at um, some hazards within the within the county. And we picked two for them to examine and look at through a, uh, a bit of a different lens and coming in uh, uh, with no set um, boundaries as far as or anything uh, that was going to bias them. And they looked at the use of anhydrous ammonia in Perth County uh, in both the recreation facilities uh, we had a tragic incident about I think it's five or six years ago now in Fernie, BC, uh, where there was uh, a, a leak and it resulted in three fatalities. And then also in the uh, uh, the food industry as well and uh, and agriculture. And so they looked at it and they, they put out a, a bit of a report that the fire chiefs had uh, some input into and the folks within the, uh, the um, buildings and industry and arenas had some input into. And, and it, again, we always can learn a little bit from that and then we also looked at the county courthouse and the security for that, being that it's a uh, um, historic building. You can't do a lot of physical changes to it, but what can we do with the way we manage people in and around and within the courthouse um, to keep people safer and um, uh, make it more efficient? And so they looked at that. We had a look at our emergency response plans. Um, we are in the process of looking at getting an update for all the emergency response plans. Um, and also the hazard identification risk assessment process, especially uh, looking at it through the lens of uh, how climate change is impacting that, uh, that process. And we've seen that in British Columbia and also uh, in uh, the Maritimes this year with the mass flooding events that, um, you know, we really have to take a hard look at this. So we've engaged again, it was a, a free process through uh, a master's engineering student uh, who was set to uh, give that report actually in early April back to the county on recommendations on how we conduct a HIRA instead of relying on um, opinion-based uh, and subjective data, looking at the science and, and, and using the science and the data we collect to project what projects and what things we need to bolster as our um, climate is changing and, and in certain cases having a more impactful um, uh, toll on the communities. Uh, and, and again, flood events are a very good thing, but we're seeing more and more severe storms as well. Uh, as far as wind events and, and, and rain and winter storms. Um, we wanted to look at the, uh, the process within emergency management and, and the, uh, all the municipalities with the uh, uh, county as well. Um, the county put in for a modernization grant through the province where we're, we have just received the, the grant as of March 4th. We'll be looking at um, getting a consultant to look at specifically uh, the use of technology in our emergency operations center, the, uh, the plans themselves, and what we can do to be more efficient and cohesive when we're responding to emergencies and even ahead of that fact. Um, we want this, uh, the plans and the technology to be intuitive and easy to use so that we're not doing 17 different training programs. Uh, we want something that is functional for the folks and we want to be able to use that technology well. And I think that was illustrated um, not only this evening during uh, council uh, doing things virtually, but uh, you know we, we don't always have to be in a physical location to accomplish something as a group and, uh, and to, to come up with a plan and make things better. So uh, we looked at those things. We were able to conduct the province had given in 2020 a buy on one of the requirements under the Emergency Management Civil Protection Act of the exercises and program requirements. They came back in late August and said, no, now you have to do them. So we did six exercises uh, throughout the county uh, and uh, in the one with uh, North Perth as well. Uh, in total, we had over 105 participants uh, and had both internal and external uh, agencies participate. And the purpose of this particular exercise was how we assess a major event, how we use our plan, what notifications we do and how we stand up our EOC. We wanted to have a good look at that, and, and that's going forward with our reevaluation of our plans. So the results from that, uh, again, excellent collaboration. The parties knew each other across the table ahead of time. Um, people were open to ideas and suggestions and new learnings that, that came out of it. Everybody participated and had a great um, knowledge of their specific areas, but also crossed over into other areas. As with everything, you can always be better. And so some of the things we looked at, again, our plan structure, the content of the plan, 
the accessibility instead of bringing a binder um, to the EOC that's three inches thick and having to flip through it, is there a better way to, to manage that? And our activation procedure and thresholds for emergencies, can we clarify those and make those easier to use? Um, so those are the things that we're working on presently as a direct result of those exercises. I, I did an after action report for the exercises and also put together an improvement plan and I believe that has been made available to council as well. Uh, then <clears throat> based on that, where do we go in the future? Um, looking at the emergency management program, if David Clark is not here tomorrow, where's the program gonna go? Is there a consistent framework that's in place that can carry forward with the next CMC or an alternate if I'm away? And how does that move forward? So we collected the data, used the data from our studies, look at things in our plans, our training and exercise program, and the collective input from all the municipalities. It's, this is not um, the opinion of the emergency management coordinator. This is a collective and people all have input again, because they have different knowledge base expertise and they have a history um, with the community as well. Um, so we want to tap into all those things. So as a result, um, we do have the emergency response plan and hazard identification risk assessment uh, undergoing uh, a study and, and looking forward to change this year, hopefully. Um, and then I also mapped out over the next three years, instead of just having a specific emergency control group, building uh, incident management teams across the county that are interoperable, that have the same training, they have the same background, they use the same paperwork, the same workflow, so that if an event happens in North Perth and somebody has to be on, uh, is away on vacation, and let me tell you from my experience over the years, that's what usually happens, that person is away when you need them the most, somebody else has the same background and training from another municipality or the county and can step in and fill that role. Um, the uh, EOC form and function, uh, again, with COVID, we realized that you know, we could do things virtually or we can do things hybrid. And sometimes in the middle of a major event, such as a uh, tornado or an ice storm event, it's not um, the safest bet to say that I want somebody from the emergency control group to physically venture from their residence out into the area that has been impacted by the disaster to get to an emergency operations center. Can we do that virtually? And those are one of the things that we're looking at is the form and function. We're, and we're looking at consistent training for that as well this year. And then again, the technology and modernization grant we've touched on already that is in place and will be moving forward. And I think the final report for that has to go back to the province uh, on the, by the 31st of uh, January this year. And then, uh, as you can see here on the screen, that is for the next three years. Um, and one of the things I find sometimes with emergency management is things get all lumped into the last quarter or the second last quarter and people feel um, rushed. They don't feel like they digested the information or they could utilize the information. My goal for the program is that we just, the, the training we're providing in the workflows, et cetera, can be used in day-to-day -day operations as well, not just in emergencies and will serve the public well and also serves the, the members of the incident management team well. And by putting the different training to get to a certain level over three years, it allows people to plan, it allows people to make sure that they're available, and it allows the, um, the municipality to pick the right people to go and take those training courses and fill those spots. And it also allows us to catch up when we have staff turnover and things like that as well. So uh, that's why we put it out there. And you can see this year our goal is, is to do a across the board, build that base standard incident command system training. The company that we've uh, utilized for that is a Canadian company. They're recognized uh, as a, a verified provider through the, the ICS Canada, which is recognized by the province as uh, uh, one of the options for um, incident management training. So uh, we've got them on board. We're looking at uh, crisis communications for our communications officers and CAOs. And then also uh, <clears throat> being that it's election year this year, when the new councils come in as well, giving a half day of uh, training, about three hours or so, uh, ICS 402 for elected officials. So that elected officials understand that when there's an emergency, what their role is, and we pre can prepare them and then work with the communications folks on prepping them when you have to step in front of the camera or be that forward face to the public, that you can do it with confidence and you can do it as a well-informed uh, public face. So 
uh, that's uh, that's sort of where we are, and it's moving forward uh, quite well. Um, I, I really uh, kudos to the team in North Perth. They've been a pleasure to work with, and uh, uh, continuing to move forward. And I think that pretty much concludes the uh, the presentation, Your Worship. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Clark. I've uh, enjoyed uh, following the developments under your tenure and uh, the training uh, platform that you're building looks remarkable and I salute you for that. Uh, Councilor, any questions or comments uh, that you have for Mr. Clark at this time about emergency management and the plan from uh, your perspective? Okay, I'm not seeing any indication of questions or comments at this point in time. I don't. Oh, Councillor Rothwell, there we go, Councillor Rothwell. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Todd, and thank you, uh, Dave, for your your report. Uh, could you just give us a bit more information about uh, the uh, IC, uh, the training uh, for ICS and what all would uh, be entailed with that? Is it uh, uh, online or uh, hopefully in person at some point or or how how is that going to roll out thank you yeah. and uh, through the mayor to councilor uh, rothwell yes actually the ics 100 is the base level and that is online it's a seven hour course uh it's a video course it's not death by powerpoint um and uh, we've had very good feedback from those folks who have taken it thus far um, and then we are building on that to get back into the in-person training as the restrictions and mandates have been lifted. Uh, you can't beat the face-to-face uh, -face training. So we would be bringing the folks out and then again, specific to um, whatever it is, whether it's the public information officer training or the level 200 or a level 300 training to manage greater incidents, it, uh, it will be in person and, and we'll invite everybody all, from across all the lower tiers and the county to participate in that. And again, that builds those relationships at that particular point in time. And then the, the, the goal behind this really is um, outside of a, a, a one day event or a one shift event for the emergency services, when we move beyond that to three days, five days, a month for a major event when we're recovering and, and uh, sort of the, uh, the sexy part, I guess, of emergency response is over to more flashing lights and, and shiny trucks and those sorts of things. The community has to recover. And the incident command system allows us to build an incident action plan to work towards that recovery in a, a, a methodic uh, format and also um, to be fiscally responsible and make sure our personnel are looked after. So that's what the incident command system is about. It was born out of the wildfire in uh, Southern California in the 70s, where they had everybody doing all their own, their own things, and it resulted in loss of apparatus, and lo loss of life, and a non-structured response to wildfires. And if you follow any of the wildfires now, uh, they're all run using the incident command system. So uh, hopefully that, uh, Councillor, uh, that answers your question. Uh, yes, absolutely. Thanks very much, uh, Dave, for uh, your leadership uh, on our one of our longest lasting uh, emergencies uh, with the uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, but also uh, the leadership uh, that you've shown as well as the cooperation for all of our member municipalities. I believe uh, firmly that that is the strength of our system, is the ability to uh, work together uh, for our entire community. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Any other comments or questions at this point? We're not seeing any, so I have a resolution for our consideration council that uh, is as follows, that council receives a report titled Emergency Management Update 2021 Achievements and 2022 Program Report for Information. And I call on Deputy Mayor Callum to be our mover for this. Yes, I will make that motion, thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you be our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried unanimously. Mr. Clark, David Clark, thank you very much for all your service in, in the 
10 years so far. We look forward to uh, some pretty remarkable things uh, from your service uh, uh, on our behalf and we're grateful for it and, and for all those that are supporting you and working with you. Thank you very much, Mayor Kaysenberg and through yourself to council, thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity to present this evening. Pleasure. All right, so let's uh, move at this time then to agenda item number five, reports from departments and key staff. For item five, one, council is invited to provide staff with consent to the development of a memorandum of understanding about services and programs to be available to the municipality that are provided by the Maitland Valley Conservation Authority. I'm going to call, I, I think it's CAO Snell, to present the report, which introduced in draft the services that the Conservation Authority proposes to make available. A council is asked to support this proposed inventory. CAO Snell, it's over to you. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you. I'd like to begin by actually thanking Francis Hale for helping me put to together tonight's report. As Council is aware, um, the CAs have been provided new regulations under the Conservation Authorities Act. The regulation requires that the CAs complete a transition plan that um, outlines their new funding and levy framework. The second requirement under the regulations provide an inventory of programs and services based on three categories, mandatory categories, municipally requested, and other. The other category would include programs and services that CAs deem to be unadvisable but are not fun or deemed to be advisable but are not funded by the province or municipalities. Council received a, a letter th um, through through Mayor Kaysenberg uh, from um, MVCA Chair Councillor Matt Duncan outlining the inventory of programs and services provided by Maitland Valley Conservation Authority. The one um, note of programs beyond the mandatory programs of Maitland Valley Conservation Authority is uh, looking at continuing is watershed stewardship. So watershed stewardship includes extension services, forestry and monitoring. This will not be, this is not provincially mandated. Then the Maitland Valley Conservation Authority will um, provide an MOU for council's review and approval at a later date. And certainly in the past, um, watershed stewardships have always been a, a key component or a core component of the MVCA and included as part of our annual levy. So therefore we're recommending tonight that um, we, res we support the correspondence received from Chair Matt Duncan and that North Perth supports in principle the drafting of the memorandum of understanding identifying the programs and services provided by Maitland Valley Conservation Authority, including stewardship for council's consideration. Just would like to make a note in talking to um, general manager Phil Beard, approximately half of the municip member municipalities for the Conservation Authority have um, reviewed um, the letter from the MVCA and have supported the letter to date. I'll certainly answer any questions council may have. Uh, thank you, CAO Snell. Um, let's begin with Councillor Rothwell. Thanks, Mary Todd, and thanks, uh, Chris and Fran, for the report, and uh, certainly uh, Councillor Duncan for your leadership on the uh, Conservation Authority. My understanding is that there's been some discussion. Uh, we had it at the budget uh, table uh, here regarding the possibility of uh, having uh, uh, water uh, shed uh, improvement uh, uh, programs or water quality improvement programs, uh, perhaps at uh, North Perth. But then my understanding is that the county was looking at the possibility of that with the approval of their budget. Is there room in this agreement if uh, I believe it's the county that then uh, would move forward? Or would that be a separate agreement with the county? Thank you. CEO Snell. Thank you for the question, Councillor Rothwell. As I understand to date, the county has put um, $25,000 aside for um, program design in 2022. So effectively we'll be using that time and funds to develop a program and we'll be partnering um, with our conservation authorities um, on how that program would be delivered. But 
we're just in the early stages of the, those conversations. And uh, hopefully the program will be designed and developed in 2022 for with a launch in 2023. And my understanding it probably would require a separate agreement uh, for the delivery uh, of those programs. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I'm not seeing any at this point, so uh, let's move forward with the resolution for our consideration. That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth supports the proposed inventory of programs and services outlined by the Maitland Valley Conservation Authority in correspondence from Chair Councillor Matt Duncan dated February 25th, 2022. And further that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth supports in principle the drafting of a memorandum of understanding identifying programs and services provided by the Maitland Valley Conservation Authority for council consideration. Can I call on Councillor Richardson to be our mover for this one? I'll move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Rothwell, will you second that? Yes, I'd be pleased to do so. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. That's item 5.1.2. Council is invited to adopt business plans that have been prepared by the various departments in the municipal corporation. These have been updated against council input and small changes in our environment. I'll call on North Perth CAO Chris Snell for comments and perhaps pointing out where some of those changes may have been made. Mr. Snell. Thank you again, Mayor and Council. As Council is aware, we presented the business plans through the budget process. Council did um, request a number of minor changes with the most um, significant one being within um, recreate or sorry, facilities and public works with the relocation of the cemeteries. As Council is aware, um, the proposed work in 2022 outweighs um, staff capacity in every department. The, that gap is approximately 11,847 hours, which represents approximately six additional FTEs. As well, all the business plans are included in the proposed 2022 budget. Certainly happy to answer any questions council may have. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, CEO Snell, uh, Council, turn to you. Questions or comments at this point? Sir Rothwell. Uh, thanks, Mayor Todd. Uh, through you, uh, Chris, uh, thanks for the reports and the updates. My, my question is specifically regarding the most uh, recent change, departmental change with uh, protective services and development or uh, I think I've got the wording slightly wrong, uh, would now be uh, an appropriate time to see a consolidation of that in terms of the work plan because it's uh, the department's now created. Is that, in fact, correct? And uh, we take things uh, development-related out of the clerk's department and put them under the new uh, department. Would that not be the time to do that? Thank you. So as of recently, um, all the... Uh, departments are um, now um, aligned and, and have the appropriate manager in place. So the clerk's department the business plan will need to be dismantled um, entirely uh, with clerk's department falling under corporate services and some of those other functions as mentioned by Councilor Rothwell going to um, um, development and protective services. We will be working on that, um, but I do would like to allow um, the new managers to get up to speed. Um, and hopefully if it's not done, it'll be certainly done for the next business plan cycle. Thank you. So if, if in fact, you know, council agrees to uh, 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 approve these business plans and so on, it's with that proviso with the understanding is that they will be updated uh, in due course uh, and brought back to council for its uh, uh approval in terms of the new uh, uh, 
new business plans uh, to incorporate, correct? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Um, Councilor Andreessen is next. Yes, thank you through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, yes, um, interesting to see in these business plans how the continued need for um, six proposed staff members continues to be there. Um, Mr. Snell, I'm just wondering if you can just clarify for me, is that like, is this proposed six additional people to be approved yet or already approved? I'm a bit confused about that. And is that something that you feel um, should be done to support these business plans? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Andreessen. So the business plans themselves don't propose that we add six additional st st staff per people. That is just showing the sort of the, wor the workload deficit. We have included, as you are aware, um, through the budget process, a couple of new positions that will be included that will help um, with that um, deficit. And as we've previously discussed, the facility facilities department will be continuing to re review. Um, their needs as they, as they continue to um, understand um, the new role of managing all the facilities. So we may see um, some departments come back back additionally throughout the 2022 year, but that will certainly drop, drop be, be before council. And as I said, there was a couple of new positions in the, the budget um, process that will also help offset the, the um, deficit. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? We're not seeing any, so I do have a resolution here. Uh, it reads as follows. The Council of the Municipality of North Perth receive and adopt the 2022 Department Business Plans. Can I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our mover for this one? Yes, I so move. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Sutter will you be our second mover. I will second it. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Sir Rothwell, did you have uh, some additional uh, item to bring to our attention? Uh, yes. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd. Just through you and to follow up on Councillor Andreessen's last question. Uh, so I'm just uh, wanted to be clear. So with the uh, budget uh, approval in place and these, uh, I think Chris mentioned uh, two new positions, uh, should the business plans not be amended to, in fact, uh, uh, account for the new staffing uh, hires when they're hired to address that shortfall or some note, in fact, uh, added to the uh, business uh, plans to reflect uh, that they acknowledge that uh, council has made uh, decision to uh, address the uh, stated shortfall of some 11,000 plus hours. Thank you. See us now. Yes, so I just, certainly we can, I'm just trying to decide how we would we could recognize that. Certainly, um, that could be recognized when we bring back um, um, future updates, um, or else it could be could be made a note in um, the overall um, business plans. It is hard to say when we will have those staff hired um, and how much impact they will have on 2022, but and certainly. Um, it could be recognized that certainly um, Council on North Perth is making an attempt to close that gap. Uh, thanks for your comments, uh, uh, Chris. And I think that's that's my point uh, is that, uh, I mean, it's it's very clear in your report and in the business plans when you do the cumulative values, it's a substantial number. But uh, without the acknowledgement or update that Council is trying to address uh, that, uh, it's... It, uh, if you read it out of context, it would seem that yes, uh, council is approving 
the business plans knowing full well that we're six staff uh, deficient in terms of, of the projected hours. That's my concern. Thank you. CEO Snell, do you have any comment about that? Additionally? Uh, certainly, I, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to really f uh, think of my feet as where we can add that wording. Um, just because it is across the board, but we, if council prefer, we can defer um, the approval tonight and we can come back with, with something that um, um, addresses that concern. Is it possible, um, Mr. Snell, that, that perhaps there's a preface to the business plans that sort of acts to express uh, um, the, the general thrust of the corporation and uh, acknowledges this matter? Possibility. Yeah, I think that's that's certainly a possibility. I think the, I, I think I mean it's important to recognize too that we've closed the gap from last year, even with this the addition of um, resources um, allocated by council. Um, so we could we could include something as a preface, maybe in just um, overall administration, even um, to document um, that. Um, a strategic uh, attempt by council to close that gap. Um, Councillor Barons is next. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, this question is probably for CEO Snell. Chris, just in reading it, um, having just done the budget and knowing that there were a couple of positions approved there, um, it's a little bit confusing and I kind of like your idea of deferral only because when I'm reading this I'm under the impression that even though we've approved the budget we are still six short even though those ones that were approved in the budget maybe haven't been hired yet so as a counselor when I'm looking at it knowing what was in the budget seeing this report and then knowing that we're revamping the organizational structure, I'm getting slightly confused on exactly how many are we down, where are we down, and I know that it's buried in, um, I was gonna say the business plans, but that's basically, I guess, when we looked at that reevaluation, where it was, it's just, it's a little, misrepresentative or maybe I'm just not clearly understanding it. Do you understand what I mean? Yes, I, and I, I've, and certainly if, if council wants to give staff the time, we can certainly take this back and possibly even revamp the business plans to include the new structure. It's just at the time of, of budget and, and trying to um, just um, keep the process moving we didn't take the time to redo the business plans on the new structure if council would prefer us we can take that back and complete the process under the new organizational structure and address this idea of how many hours have been um, addressed by the 2022 budget process and what potentially may be um, need to be addressed with either future requests of council or next year's budget process and um, Chris, I would really personally appreciate that. I realize that these business plans are a lot of work and it may take um, a little bit longer than anticipated to go through them all and um, make them all align with one another between the budget and the business plans and the organizational structure. What time frame are you looking at and how imperative is it that in the next week or two, we adopt business plans. I don't think it's imperative that they be adopted in any rush. For the most part, council, or sorry, staff is working up the business plans and the budget as we speak any, regardless. Um, it aligns with our adop already adopted strategic plan and the other projects are already budget approved. So um, staff are already using them as a, as a guiding document. And we can certainly take the time to um, bring them back um, 
um, amended uh, as per the new org structure. I, I don't know, have the exact timeline because I'd like to talk to senior staff before I committed everybody to, to exactly when we bring them back. Thank you, CAO Snell and Councillor Behrens. Um, it, it is quite a bit of work to be done uh, to, to bring about that alignment. Let me just see if I've got this right. I want to make sure that, that my own head is this is straight. At this point, we're saying that, that despite the Council's efforts, as a result of the Council's efforts, we still are approximately six full-time equivalents short uh, for the purposes of actually executing to these business plans. Do I have that right? As it stands, um, as of as a as a moment in time, as of today, yes. Thank you. I just wanted to be more crystal clear. All right, uh, Councillor Barrett has suggested procedurally that um, we consider deferral. We have a motion on the floor, uh, moved and seconded. Um, so the question is, uh, we should go back to uh, the mover and seconder and ask them if they would consent to withdraw. So let me turn first to the mover, Councillor Rothwell. Uh, would you consent to withdraw the motion that's on the floor uh, with the, I, as I understand it, the intended purpose to allow staff some more time to bring back um, reworked business plans that align with the new corporate structure? Is that your wish? I'd be prepared to do that, yes. Okay, thank you. Councillor Seiler, would that be your wish as well? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Uh, is there any on council who significantly object to the withdrawal given that the mover and seconder are in agreement? I'm not seeing any indication, though I do have uh, a note here from uh, Councillor Richardson. Councillor Richardson, did you want the floor? Um, thank you. And through you, Mark Kaysenberg, I was just going to say that I agree uh, with the deferral to in order to get those business plans updated to basically include all of the uh, new org new org, org chart information. So I just wanted to state that in agreement. So I'm on side. Thank you. Okay. So it looks like uh, with consent from the mover and the secretary, and with no objection from any councillor in attendance, that we are uh, able to withdraw this motion. Clerk Klein, do we need to do anything in particular at this point? Do you need a resolution to withdraw or? So, so we want an amendment that, to this motion? Okay. Fill in vacuum with something else. Okay. So, so council, the, the clerk is saying that um, we, we have sufficient parliamentary structure to withdraw the motion um, and that uh, at this point then a substitute motion that might be appropriate would be to uh, defer receipt of the 2022 department business plans uh, for the purposes of updating against current department structure and adding additional commentary so we'll cut that because i don't know if i can repeat it Klein, does that seem right to you? Like it, it does what council's intent is based on our discussion. Okay. So the clerk is is thinking that that sounds right. Uh, council, any of you wish to uh, improve that motion in any way? Can we get the text of that motion, or will it be in the eScribe uh, resolution? Okay. We, we think so. We think it will show up in the resolution. All right. So um, let me go back perhaps to the mover and seconder and, and test uh, your willingness then. Councilor Rothwell, are you willing to move that deferral resolution as Yes. Stipulated? Yes, I Thank will. You. Siler, will you be our seconder for that one? Yes. Okay. So we have moved and seconded a resolution that, that uh, has the intent of deferring the receipt and adoption and um, referring this to staff for efforts to consolidate um, around the new departmental structure and to add prefatory comments regarding, not even regarding, it was prefatory comments. 
Yes, sort of. You're, you think they're good? Okay. So it looks to me the clerk feels she's pretty good on this one. Um, any further comments or questions, discussion or debate? All right, we're not seeing any indication of that. So let's trigger that vote and we'll see whether the wording seems good. <laughs> Yeah. And that is unanimously carried. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, council is uh, under item 5.1.3, invited to update the corporate vaccination policy pertaining to COVID-19 given the changes that are afoot in COVID-19 regulations in the province of Ontario. Uh, CAO Snell will review this matter and answer questions. Mr. Snell. Thank you again, Mayor and Council. I'm actually gonna call on Mary Emma Lippert, HR and Administrative Services Assistant to present the report tonight. And I'll certainly be able to assist Mary Emma in answering any questions Council may have. Thank you, Chris. Good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg and Council. Tonight, we're bringing forward a few revisions to our current COVID-19 vaccination policy, as well as our internal pandemic procedures, effective April 4th, uh, two weeks following the March break, typically uh, a high time of travel. Uh, so as you all know, the COVID-19 vaccination policy was originally approved by Council September 27th, 2021, um, and implemented immediately. Uh, we are proposing the existing policy be revised to eliminate Section 4, uh, mandatory testing. With increased supply of rapid testing and fully vaccinated staff, we feel that, the, that this mandatory requirement um, is no longer necessary. The second update we're looking to make is uh, just within our internal um, I guess a little less formal are our internal guidelines and procedures for staff um, that have been ongoing for, for the past little while, specifically around uh, masking and screening, ending this on April 4th as well. Uh, with the recent provincial announcement, removing these public measures, we feel that it is safe to now do so in our workplace as well. Staff have done an excellent job testing, screening, and masking, um, and understand that these measures may be introduced at any time um, if we see number a spike in numbers or um, um, it, it's provincially um, introduced. Um, so North Perth will remain mask friendly and we do encourage staff and visitors at, at our office as well as our facilities to continue masking if more comfortable and respect the choices of those around us. Um, this has been discussed with the management team and these changes, um, we feel that they would better align with the current provincial guidelines um, and, and would cause less confusion for, for staff and visitors. Um, I welcome any questions that council may have at this time. Uh, thank you, Mary Emma and CAO Snell. Uh, questions or first comments on this matter from council? Councillor Andreessen. Hi, thank you through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, to uh, Ms. Lippert, um, I just have a question if that's okay. Um, on the very first page of the report, it has comments number one, disclosure. And so I'm just, I'm just confused on that part. So will new employees still require to disclose their vaccination status upon being hired at our municipality? If you could just clarify that for me, that'd be great, thanks. Yes, sorry, I did uh, leave that that piece in there because I just wanted to um, make it clear that 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 was remaining in the policy, um, and that is now and will remain a, a screening um, measure that's in place for all new hires going forward. Uh, just secondary to that, if that's okay, um, Mayor Kaysenberg. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I'm just. I'm just wondering, is that um, permissible, you know, in terms of legislation to require that with new employees? I just want to make sure that we're uh, within, um, you know, what we're allowed to do in terms of being an employer. Are we still allowed to do that? Thanks. Thank 
Thank you, Councillor Andreessen. Yes, so we did seek legal advice on that. We're not the only employer. We're actually um, many, many, uh, we're seeing many employers doing the same. Um, as of right now, it, it hasn't really posed an issue. Um, it, um, it, yeah, it, I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't leave it. Chris, maybe you can, can correct me if I'm wrong or add any further information, but um, as far as I know, it would, it would remain and yeah, and I, th I think the reason why we'd like it to remain too is because we can't foresee the future. Um, so we we don't know. I mean, we hope this is the end of COVID, but if if it is not, we would like to maintain this um, requirement at least for the time being. Um, if at some point um, COVID becomes um, something that we uh, really do have to just learn to live with two or three years from now, it's something that maybe we could readdress. But in case um, COVID does um, unfortunately come come back. We would like to um, ensure that we're not hiring additional staff that are not vaccinated, and thus, if we were to bring mandatory testing back in, um, we would not have the issue of having additional staff um, do the mandatory testing. And as Mary Emma said, uh, many of the municipalities and other employers are are keeping this under status, and as of right now. Um, most of the municipalities in Perth County are, are maintaining um, some sort of vaccination policy, um, both for new hires and, and current staff. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Anstead is next. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. And thanks very much, Mary Emma, for the report. Uh, one question I did have, whether it's for you or Chris, not sure. I know you had mentioned just that it's going to be revisited if cases start to go up or there's uh, increased or there's new guidance from the province. I'm just kind of wondering what does that look like? At what point would this be revisited? Thank you. Certainly the municipality has always followed public health guidelines. So as far as um, social distancing, masking or screening, if the provincial um, or local um, public health were to require those um, Tools to be re-implemented as part of um, as part of a requirement to see a reduction in local COVID um, cases. We would cer certainly implement um, those um, requirements to to um, come back in status, and that would just be our internal policy being um, re-amended. Um, we're hopeful that we can um, will not have to bring mandatory testing back, but. Um, as we said, like, we can't foresee all the future, um, but certainly um, North Perth has always followed the direction of either the province or local public health. Thank you. Councillor Seiler is next. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Uh, Chris, just a question. That This has been a question that have been brought to me several times. Where do the, our municipalities stand with the state of emergency? Has the, has the province made any... Uh, recommendations there or what's where's that all stand so certainly um cmc um, clark has providing advice both to the county and to the lower tier municipalities in con consultation with um, direction from um, local public health and at this time it's it's understanding um, from cmc clark that um, the um, local emergency will stay in place. Um, I'm thinking to the end of April, um, at which time um, it will be um, discussed between the county and the existing lower tiers that are in a state of emergency. Um, the state of emergency, um, if it's if it's if it's not required. Um, the state of emergency can sit idle. It doesn't cost us anything to be in a state of emergency, uh, but it does give certainly um, the municipality um, some time to be nimble if we do see a spike in cases, um, both locally um, or provincially as a result of some of the current um, lifting of um, some of the public health policies. So we're more or less working together with the county on this state of emergency? That's correct. All right, thank you. I think it's fair to say that we're following carefully advice again from public health and from CEMC Clark 
with regards to how to proceed with the release of the state of emergency. I have asked, um, I think my first ask was last November. Um, so I, I've been talking about it certainly in terms of releasing the state of emergency, but uh, um, we rely on the advice of those experts and um, certainly uh, my, my itchiness to release it in November uh, was rapidly countered by the Omicron uh, wave. So perhaps there was uh, wisdom in that kind of patience uh, as we saw it unfold. Uh, but uh, certainly an important question, uh, Councillor Styler and I get asked it all the time, including in the grocery store. So um, I, I get where that's coming from indeed. Uh, any other comments or questions? I actually have one, and it's it's maybe a curious scenario that um, that we should at least get some feedback on. Um, what if we have employees who wish to continue to wear their mask and have public duties where they encounter members of the public who do not wish to mask? Um, what what do we do in the case of that potential conflict, where a staff member would prefer not to be? unmasked or have an unmasked person in their presence? So for the most part, we do have um, uh, existing um, physical barriers in place for most of our service counters. Um, however, in the case, if um, there was a situation um, where that um, was to happen where a staff person did not feel comfortable um, interacting with a masked or an unmasked person, they we could find alternate arrangements to have that person served by somebody who was feeling more comfortable. Um, also, too, certainly most of our services can be handled through some sort of, sort of social distancing as well. Um, so it it would certainly um, be rare that 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 um, staff person um, could not could not. Um, be somewhat relieved or or a uh, different service model or method could be could be found and certainly just so councils where um, director of programming um, Amy Gangle has been working very hard with her um, daycare staff which of course is probably the one department that um, um, it's hard it's hard to um, have those staff replaced um, in, in a quick turnaround and certainly the daycare staff are feeling quite comfortable going forward with with the uh, um, plans that we have in place. And certainly um, child care staff are working closely with all the other Perth County um, providers. Thank you, CEO Snell. Any other questions or comments? All right. I have a resolution for our consideration as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approved the amendments to the COVID-19 vaccination policy with an effective date, April 4th, 2022. Councillor Andreessen, can I call on you to be our mover here? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Anstep, will you be our seconder? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate further? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, CAO Snell. Next up then, we move to item 5.2, reports from the clerk's department. For item 5.2.1, the clerk has provided council with a review of voting methods available for the municipal election to be held in October of 2022. The report considers the various methods available and commonly used, results of a public survey, and the timeline. It recommends we retain an existing method, cast paper ballots that are counted by a tabulator. I'm gonna call on Clerk Klein to introduce your report and answer questions. And we just set the AV so they don't create a black hole. And uh, I'll do that. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg, and to you and members of council. Uh, before you is the 2022 municipal election voting methods report. 
Uh, just to provide some background information and legislative context, the next regular municipal election will be held on Monday, October 24th of this year. Municipal elections are conducted in accordance with the Municipal Elections Act or the MEA. And one of the provisions outlined in section 42 of the MEA is that the council of a local municipality may pass bylaws authorizing the use of vote and vote counting equipment such as tabulators, as well as the use of alternative voting methods, such as vote by mail or internet voting. These bylaws must be passed by May 1st in the year of the election. And the MEA also states that the clerk shall establish procedures and forms for the use of vote and vote counting equipment by June 1st in the year of the election. Uh, council may recall that back in August of 2021, staff were directed to conduct community engagement regarding vote counting equipment, alternative voting methods, and voting locations. A survey was posted on Your Say North Perth from August 30th to September 17th, and we had 22 people respond to that survey. The main methods of voting that are used across Ontario are paper ballots, either counted manually or with vote tabulators, as well as vote by mail, internet, and telephone voting. And many municipalities also use a hybrid approach. For example, they might use internet voting during um, advanced polls and then have in-person voting with paper ballots and tabulators on election day. Here in North Perth, we've used paper ballots and vote tabulators since 2001. Um, in reviewing the responses from our community engagement survey, there was a mixed response in terms of preferred alternative voting methods. When asked to rank paper, internet, telephone, and mail-in voting, the average ranking placed internet first, followed by paper, then telephone, and finally mail-in. So uh, staff's recommendation for the 2022 municipal election is to follow a similar approach to 2018 with the use of paper ballots and vote tabulators. We're only seven short months away from the election in October, and with this tight timeline, it would be pretty difficult to introduce a new method of voting for the municipality in terms of completing the procurement process, developing new procedures, and educating the public. The recommended method is tried and true. It's been used for many years by the municipality, and the public are familiar with the technology. It's also a method of voting that upholds all of the principles of the under the MEA, including upholding the secrecy and confidentiality of the voting process, ensuring a fair and non-biased count of votes with thorough testing and maintaining the integrity of the election. Staff will also plan accordingly in terms of where we might be with COVID-19 in the fall. Um, as everyone is aware, and we discussed you know, in the previous report, it's hard to predict what the state of the pandemic will look like um, even seven months from now but additional safety measures will be planned for in-person voting just in case. Um, and this includes screening, social distancing, cleaning and sanitizing. And staff will also continue to investigate alternative voting methods well in advance of the 2026 election, including additional community engagement to determine what other options the municipality can consider for future elections. Um, so the recommendation in front of council tonight uh, is to pass a bylaw to authorize the use of vote tabulators for the 2022 municipal election. And I would be happy to answer any questions that council might have. Thank you, Kirk Klein, for this thorough report. Uh, questions and first comments from council. Councillor Andreessen's first. Hi, Lindsay. Um, I just have a comment um, through uh, Mayor Kaysenberg, if that's okay. I was just taking a look at the two, 2018 um, election turnout. And um, if you take a look at the turnout in all the wards for the municipality of North Perth, we had a range of 24 to 31% of voter turnout, which is really, really disappointing when municipal affairs, um, politics are actually more important to uh, residents really because we we touch their lives every day. And I'm very, very concerned about that lack of turnout. Um, I, I'm, I have to say that I am quite disappointed that we're not going to be able to offer um, internet voting. Um, I definitely want to support the, the current 
use of voting measures that we've used in person in the past. I think that's great and people appreciate that. But I also think that um, perhaps internet voting could help increase the turnout. Um, these kinds of elections, this election is scheduled for the fall and that's when farmers are in the fields. And if it's a good day, that's where they're, where they're going to be. And uh, any possibility for them to vote in advance, even sometimes in um, advance polls, also means that they have to get out of the field to do that. But when they vote sometimes or have that ability to vote um, you know, through the internet, it could increase voter turnout for sure. So I, I just wanna, you know, publicly make that comment. I know that we're short of time. I know we have seven months left, but I, I do have to state that I, I am disappointed, um, especially since we already knew that our voter turnout has been quite concerning in the past. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I appreciate the fact that you're looking at it in the future, but that's a long way away. And um, I, you know, I, I have concerns about this current election coming up, um, but uh, I do have, appreciate your, your work so far. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Councillor Andreessen, for, for your comments. And I, I definitely agree with you. I think, you know, voter turnout across the entire province for municipal elections is, is very low. Um, and definitely exploring alternative voting methods like internet voting could help to, to increase that. I just, again, I'll just reiterate my concerns with timing. Um, I just, I don't think there's enough time to, to procure a new, a new system and do the due diligence and testing to make sure that, you know, all of the, all of the things around internet voting, like ensuring security and all of that. I, I just don't think there's enough time for us to do that for, for the election this year. Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments? I'm not seeing any further at this point. So uh, let's have a look at uh, what's proposed here. Staff has brought forward a recommendation relating to passing a bylaw uh, that uh, settles on uh, the use of the vote tabulators, which is a historic approach. Uh, it reads as follows, that bylaw number 46-2022 being a bylaw of the municipality of North Perth to authorize the use of vote tabulators for the 2022 municipal election be introduced, read and considered read at first, second and third time and be finally passed that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. I call on Councillor Behrens to be our mover for this one. Uh, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Yes, I would make that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Duncan, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you. Discussion or debate? I'm not seeing any at this point, so let's have the vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, let's turn next to item 5.2.2. Staff is recommending approval of an application for part lot control by 2459825 Ontario Inc. addressing ability to create individual lots of record in a housing development on Victoria Avenue South and Malcolm Crescent in the Listowel Ward. The approval of this recommendation would forward this item to Perth County Council for its approval. I'm going to call on County of Perth planner Sean Yilmaz, who works on files related to North Perth, to explain and answer questions about this matter. Mr. Yilmaz, as always, welcome. Thank you, and good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg, uh, members of Council. The applicant is seeking approval from North Perth Council to pass a bylaw, which will effectively exempt the subject lands from part lot control provisions of the Planning Act. 
Um, if exempted, the applicant will be permitted to establish 11 conveyable parcels over block one of registered plan 44M81, uh, which has commonly been referred to as the Terrier subdivision. Um, this subdivision is located at the corner of Victoria Avenue South and the newly established Malcolm Crescent. It's actually at the corner of those two streets. Uh, the reference plan that has been submitted with the application shows 11 individual lots for residential purposes. The proposed exterior lot, um, which is part six and part seven, will contain one single detached dwelling with the remaining 10 interior lots containing 10 semi-detached dwellings uh, within five semi-detached buildings. The 11 dwelling units will ultimately contribute to the overall permitted range of 25 to 49 dwelling units in this development as approved through the plan of subdivision. Uh, each lot does have appropriate public road frontage and meets the lot area requirements of the North Perth zoning bylaw. Each proposed lot also has confirmed individual service connections to munis municipal waste, uh, excuse me, municipal water and wastewater services. Uh, additionally, appropriate easements are, um, have been identified, which support stormwater management requirements. Uh, the removal of part lot control to establish lot lines on lotless blocks is an accepted method of lot creation under the Planning Act. Uh, once the exempting bylaw is approved, the surveyor's reference plan uh, showing the lot lines is completed and registered at the Land Registry Office. As such, it is staff's recommendation that North Perth Council approve the application by uh, 245 Ontario Inc. for the exemption of part lot control on lands described as Block 1 of Registered Plan 44M81. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yilmaz. Um, questions or first comments on this matter by council? Okay, I'm not seeing any at this point. So I have uh, two items here that we must get through. Uh, the first is a resolution related to approval uh, as follows that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approve the application by 2459825 Ontario Inc. for the exemption of part lot control on lands described as blocks one of registered plan 44M81 in the list of award municipality of North Perth. If the proposed bylaw is adopted, it shall be forwarded to the County of Perth for approval. Can I call on Deputy Mayor Kellum to be our mover for this one? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. you Councillor Johnston, will you serve as a seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Next up is the bylaw. It reads as follows that bylaw number 43 2022, being a bylaw to exempt from part lot control, be introduced and read. Sorry, be introduced read and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed, and the said by law be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with a seal operation. Can I call on Councillor Richardson to be our mover on this one? I will move that. Thank you. Thank you and Councillor Rothwell, will you be our second here? Yes, I will, and I'll have a comment after. Thank you. Thank you much. Um, any uh, discussion or debate? Thank you, Mayor Todd. And uh, through to Sean, thank you for the report and the draft bylaw. Uh, I believe that uh, we need a modification in the bylaw to uh, include single detached and semi detached dwellings. Uh, there's one single detached, and in the bylaw, it only talks about semi detached. If that is correct, uh, revised, I would uh, certainly vote in favor. Thank you. Mr. Yilmaz, any response? Uh, yes, thank you. Sorry, um, that can certainly be added in just to add that for the clarity. Um, certainly, we could do that. Okay. Is it okay for it to be noted as part of our deliberations, or do you want a specific uh, amendment saying that we need a revision here to clear claim? Um, 
think that the bylaws be approved as amended. Good. Okay. So we might need a revision to the wording of this resolution. Bylaw number 43 2022 as amended, being a bylaw to exempt from parking lot control. That's the way to do it. The clerk is nodding her head. That's all good. Okay, uh, is that good with the mover? The mover was Councillor Richardson. Was that good with you, uh, Matt? Yes, I'm okay with that. Thank you. And um, Councillor Rothwell, are you okay with that too? I am. Thank you. All right. So we'll we'll just adjust. We'll tweak there for the purposes uh, that have been described and that will be handled by Mr. Yule now as this follow up here. Uh, any further discussion or debate? I just want to make sure council knows what we're doing. We're voting on a bylaw that uh, will permit this this uh, exemption from part lot control, but we're going to make minor amendments uh, as per Councillor Rothwell's comments. Let's have the vote. That is carried. Thank you. Uh, that moves us along to item 5.3, uh, reports from the programs department. We have no reports coming from that department this evening, but uh, they're always busy uh, creating goodness in our community. Uh, next, let's move to item 5.4, reports from our facilities department. Uh, they've been quite busy, but we don't have reports from them tonight. We appreciate as always their service in our community. That allows us to move down to item 5.5, Portsmouth Finance Department. As item 5.5.1, finance staff has brought forward for council review the accounts as of this day, which is March 21st. This account listing represents expenditures for all municipal services, including Perth Meadows operations, but does not include the incoming revenues that offset these expenses. I'll note that some councils have declared a potential pecuniary interest in this item and will absent themselves from consideration of voting. Those who are participating, are there any questions about this report for our staff? And I'm not seeing any indication of same, so I have a resolution that reads as follows. It's following Summary of accounts be received by council for information. The total is $1,829,467.64. Uh, Councillor Seiler, will you be our mover for this one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Andreessen, will you serve as our second? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? We're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, that allows us to move down to item 5.6. We have no reports from our Environmental Services Department tonight. As always, working diligently on the community safety behalf, amongst other things. We turn now to item 5.7, reports from our manager of operations. Uh, similarly, we have uh, no reports from this department this evening. We know that as spring comes on, it's keep them moving. We turn now to item 5.8, reports from the fire department. We have no report from the fire department for this meeting. Uh, but I would like to express my appreciation to Councillor Anstead for representing this council at a special um, gathering that was held uh, uh, last week uh, pertaining to um, some news from the province about new policies and, and changes in codes that um, that uh, the outcomes of work for years uh, related to the deaths of uh, two of our own firefighters 11 years ago. So thank you, Councillor Anstead, for representing us at that occasion. Uh, we're now at item six on our agenda for item 6.1. Councillors 
Are there any reports you would like to ask of staff or of our committees to request opportunity to speak? Please so indicate in the chat picture of the web conference tool. I'm not seeing anything, so that allows us to move on to item seven. We have received uh, no additional items of correspondence, which require any action. That brings us to item eight. This is the bylaws section. The council can consider some bylaws. And uh, we have three items here tonight. First is item 8.1. Council is invited to approve a bylaw that imposes by amendment a new Schedule K into the bylaw commonly known as the North Perth Fees and Licenses Bylaw. Councillors, do you have any questions about this matter? I'm not seeing any, so uh, I will uh, read the enabling uh, motion here. The bylaw 44-2022 being a bylaw to amend the North Perth Fees and Licenses Bylaw Schedule K be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed. And that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Anstead to be our leader for that? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Behrens, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I will second that. Thanks. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this bylaw? Let's have the vote. And that is carried, thank you, as item 8.2. Council is invited to approve a bylaw uh, that repeals an earlier action of this council pertaining to a land planning matter in Listfield. Are there any questions about this matter before we consider it? I'm not seeing any expression of that, so let's have the resolution that bylaw 45-2022 uh, being a bylaw to repeal bylaw numbers 21 2022 and 39 2022, be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time and be finally passed. And this bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councillor Duncan, will you serve as our mover for this one? Yes, I'll move that. And Deputy Mayor Kellum, will you be our seconder? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. And uh, that allows us to move down to item 8.3. Council is invited by bylaw action to introduce a revised parking requirements policy for multi-residential lands in North Perth. This matter has been extensively discussed the effects of this bylaw are to amend the North Perth zoning bylaw as amended. As amended, sorry. Are there any questions about this matter for the clerk or for the planner before we consider it? I'm not seeing any, so I have the resolution. It reads as follows: that bylaw 48-2022, being a bylaw to amend bylaw number 6 zb 1999 as amended, be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed. Said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councillor Johnston, will you serve as our mover here? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. And Councillor Richardson, will you be our seconder? I'll second that, thank you. Thank you, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. Uh, that moves us to item nine on our agenda. Are there any councillors wishing leave to give notice of motion this evening? I'm not seeing any indication of that. 
Uh, we're now at item 10 on our agenda for item 10.1. Are there any announcements that would be of benefit to our community or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? If you would like to speak, please so indicate in the usual fashion. Councillor Johnston. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Uh, just want to announce it was my pleasure today uh, to begin to distribute milk to all the elementary schools in Perth County uh, from all the funds that were raised on World Milk Day in conjunction with the ranch uh, broadcasting live from our farm. So we were able today to deliver over 2,500 cartons of chocolate milk to seven elementary schools in the north uh, third of the county and uh, we'll be moving on to 11 schools on Wednesday in Stratford and then finishing off the rest of the county on Friday and we will deliver over 8,000 um, cartons of chocolate milk to elementary schools in the county this week and that was all money that was raised uh, through the ranch on World Milk Day. Thank you for the wonderful news Councillor Johnston that's that's an extremely impressive effort and I know already that you're scheming about what next year's effort looks like. So um, again, thank you so much for uh, that service and uh, um, congratulations to the ranch and appreciation to them for their service in this matter as well. Any other announcements from council? Okay, uh, that moves us along to item 11 on our agenda. Uh, we have one matter to be considered in a closed session meeting of council. I will now read the resolution that both explains and enables uh, our action to enter session. Let the council proceed in camera at 8.46 p.m. to address a matter pertaining to the following. Information explicitly supplied in confidence to the municipality or local board by Canada, a province or territory or a crown agency or any of them regarding the Ministry of Labour, Training and Skills Development. Can I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our mover here? Yes, I so move. Thank you, and uh, Councillor Seiler, will you be our second? Yes, I'll second, thank you. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you, Council. Uh, we're going to reconfigure the visual settings to enable us to enter a closed session meeting. Those who have not been invited to attend the closed session meeting should exit the WebEx call at this point in time. Council, let's let's take five minutes or so. We'll be back at 8.53 uh, p.m. for our closed session. Thank you.
testing to see if we uh, have the change of settings working on YouTube. Councillor Richardson, you're our trusty uh, observer. Are you seeing impacts of the AV changes at this point? Not it, not yet. It takes 10 to 12 seconds. One moment, please. Yep. Thank you. Live, good to go. All right, thank you, Councillor Richardson. Um, with regards to item 11, uh, uh, under item 12, actually on our agenda, I can report to the community that we did hold a discussion pertaining to the matter that uh, was described in our motion that enabled us to go into closed session regarding um, information explicitly supplied in confidence to the municipality or local board regarding the Ministry of Labor, Training and Skills Development. Further report at this time is not warranted. Council, as a mandated good practice, acts near the end of its meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business of its meeting through what is called the confirmatory bylaw. I have a draft for a confirmatory bylaw number 50-2022, which reads as follows, that bylaw number 50-2022 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed. And that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Uh, Councillor Richardson, can I call on you to be our mover for this? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Andreessen, will you be our seconder? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And we're missing, oh, up there, that is carried. Thank you very much. And uh, that brings us to the adjournment hour. Councillors, we have completed and taken action on the business that has come before us tonight. I have a motion to adjourn, which reads as follows. The council meeting uh, adjourns at 9.23 p.m. We meet again for general council business on Monday, April 4th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Can I call on Councillor Anstead to be our mover? Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Behrens, will you be our seconder? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any discussion? Oh, no. It's not debatable. I just into a pattern, apparently. Let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Um, council, thank you for a good meeting. And uh, um, at this point, uh, council will meet again, as we said, on April 4th. Until that date, I wish you good success in your many endeavors this meeting. Good night.